Good morning. I am Devasena. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the transceiver design considerations in wireless sensor network in a physical layer. This topic is present in the subject Adigawk and wireless sensor networks. Transceiver design considerations in wireless sensor network in a physical layer. So, in this transceiver design consideration topic, we are going to discuss about these um, subtopics. First topic we are going to discuss is issues in physical layer design in wireless sensor networks. The second design consideration we are going to discuss is energy usage profile and the power consumption in a transceiver. The third design consideration we are going to discuss is a choice of modulation scheme for the transceiver. The fourth one we are going to discuss is a dynamic modulation scale. The last design consideration in the transceiver we are going to discuss is a antenna consideration. So under these topics, subtopics, we are going to discuss about the design consideration of a transceiver. The first design consideration in the transceiver of wireless sensor network is issues in physical area design. There should be low power consumption. Due to low power consumption, it is expected to have small transmit power and thus a small transmission range. As a further consequence of low power consumption, low duty cycle, most hardware should be switched off or operated in a low power standby mode most of the time. Comparably, low data rates on the order of tens to hundreds kilobits per second are required. Low implementation complexity and cost. Low degree of mobility. And the last is a small form factor for the overall node. The next design consideration for the transceiver is energy usage profile and the power consumption in a transceiver. The choice of a small transmit power leads to an energy consumption profile different from other wireless devices like cell phones. The radiated energy is small, typically on the order of 0 dBm that is corresponding to 1 milliwatt. On the other hand, the overall transceiver that is R of front end and baseband part consumes much more energy than in actually radiated. Estimate that a transceiver working at frequencies beyond 1 gigahertz takes 10 to 100 milliwatts of power to radiate 1 milliwatt. Similar numbers are given for 2.4 gigahertz CMOS transceivers. That is for a radiative power of 0 dBm, the transmitter uses actual 32 milliwatt, whereas the receiver uses even more 38 milliwatts. For the micro modes, 21 milliwatt are consumed in transmit mode and 15 milliwatt in receive mode. These numbers coincide well with the observation that many practical transmitter designs have efficiencies below 10% at low radiated power. A second key observation is that for small transmit powers, the transmit and the receive modes consume more or less the same power. It is even possible that reception requires more power than transmission. Depending on the transceiver, the idle modes of a consumption can be less or in the same range as the receive power. To reduce average power consumption in a low traffic wireless sensor network, keeping the transceiver in idle mode all the time would consume significant amounts of energy. Therefore, it is important to put the transceiver into sleep state instead of just idling. 
It is also important to explicitly include the received power into energy dissipation models since the traditional assumption that received energy is negligible is no longer true. However, there is a problem of the startup energy or startup time which a transceiver has to spend upon waking up from sleep mode. For example, to ramp up pace locked loops or voltage controlled oscillators. During this startup time, no transmission or reception of data is possible. It depends on traffic patterns and the behavior of the MAC protocol to schedule the transceiver operation state properly. If possible, not only a single but the multiple packets should be sent during a wake-up period to distribute the startup costs over more packets. Clearly, one can attack this problem also by devising transmitter architectures with faster startup times. A third key observation is the relative costs of communications versus computation in a sensor node. Clearly, the comparison of these costs depends for the communication part on the VER, that is bit error rate, requirements, range, transceiver type, and so forth. And for the computation part on the processor type, the instruction mix, and so on. Choice of modulation scheme for the transceiver. A crucial point is the choice of modulation scheme. Several factors have to be balanced here. The required and desirable data rate and decibel rate, the implementation of complexity, the relationship between radiated power and target BER and the expected channel characteristics. These details we have to consider. To maximize the time a receiver can spend in sleep mode, the transmit time should be minimized. The higher the data rate offered by a transceiver for a modulation, the smaller the time needed to transmit a given amount of data and consequently the smaller the energy consumption. A second important observation is that the power consumption of a modulation scheme depends much more on the symbol rate than on the data rate. Obviously, the desire for high data rates at low symbol rates calls for MRA modulation schemes. However, there are below trade-offs. The next design consideration in the transceiver is dynamic modulation scaling. It is interesting to consider methods to adapt the modulation scheme to the current situation. Such an approach called dynamic modulation scaling. The energy per bit depends much more on M than on B. In fact, for the particular parameters chosen, it is shown that both energy per bit and delay per bit are minimized for the maximum symbol rate. Dynamic modulation scaling representation is shown below. Here we have seen three types of modulation scaling representation that is 8 PSK, 4 PSK and 2 PSK that is phase shift key. Now we discuss about antenna considerations. The desired small form factor of the overall sensor nodes restricts the size and the number of antennas. If the antenna is much smaller than the carrier's wavelength, it is hard to achieve good antenna efficiency. That is, with ill-sized antennas, one must spend more transmit energy to obtain the same radiated energy. Secondly, 
with small sensor node cases. It will be hard to place two antennas with suitable distance to achieve receive diversity. Here is a representation of transmitter antenna and the receiver antenna in a sensor mode. Antenna representation is shown here. Another representation of antenna. The antennas should be spaced apart at least 40 to 50 percentage of the wavelength used to achieve good effects from diversity. In addition, radio waves emitted from an antenna close to the ground typical in some applications are faced with higher path loss coefficients than the common value alpha is equal to 2 for free space communications. Moreover, depending on the application, antennas must not protrude from the casing of a node to avoid possible damage to it. Nodes are randomly scattered on the ground, for example, deployed from an aircraft will land in random orientations with the antennas facing the ground or being otherwise obstructed again. Thank you very much for listening this lecture. For further updates, kindly subscribe this channel. If you like this video means you can share this video to your friends.